There's a technology that we use today to feed the world. A technology that hasn't really changed in 10,000 years. And now, it's breaking the planet. Take a look at this slide. It highlights some of the biggest problems in our global food system caused by some of the most popular foods humans love to eat. Take cattle, for instance. If all the world's cattle came together to form their own country, they would be the planet's third largest emitter of greenhouse gases. Or chickens, the most widely eaten meat in India. They release 40 to 60 times more carbon dioxide per calorie of protein than lentils. Maybe you're more of a seafood person. Over 90% of all fish populations are strained, including one-third which are actively declining, leading to chains of bad events that mean the oceans can't perform their critical job absorbing carbon dioxide from the atmosphere as effectively. If you've been following the news about China, perhaps you'll know that 60% of the country's entire pig population has recently died from or been killed to deal with what's known as African swine fever. And it's now spread to Indian pigs, too. Sounds like a pretty bad deal, but it gets even worse. We already use over 75% of all agricultural land and a quarter of all fresh water on the planet to feed and raise livestock. And we're running out of places in the ocean to get our fish, too. Now, perhaps you've noticed a trend here. You may have realized that all of these problems seem to have one thing in common. They have to do with the animal protein production platform, namely meat, seafood, eggs, and dairy. It's a technology we've pushed to its biological limits over the last decades, and which is now causing serious threats to the climate and to planetary health. But why isn't it working anymore? It's very simple. We eat animals who eat plants. Those chickens we were talking about earlier, they take in nine calories of feed for every one calorie of output in the form of flesh. And fish, depending on the fish, can be worse. Pigs are definitely worse, and cows are much worse. So we use vast amounts of land, water, and energy, and emit vast amounts of waste and greenhouse gases to raise or catch these animals for their meat, milk, and eggs. And as demand continues to rise, we're pushing the planet to breaking point. All those steps and waste involved in feeding transporting and slaughtering animals are very hard on the environment. It's why animal agriculture is responsible for more climate change than emissions from all transportation, planes, trains, cars, on the Earth, combined. The United Nations and a whole bunch of other people say that if we care about deforestation, greenhouse gases, ocean acidification, species loss, ocean dead zones, any number of pressing environment and climate challenges, Rethinking animal protein is one of the highest priority things we can do. And those zoonotic diseases like African swine fever, they're the most common global cause of epidemics because they can jump from animals to humans. Not only that, the vast majority of antibiotics produced globally are not fed to humans, but to animals, leading to antibiotic-resistant superbugs, which caused the former head of the World Health Organization to declare the world is heading towards a post-antibiotic era in which common infections will once again kill. This will be the end of modern medicine as we know it. Despite increasing awareness of the issues with animal protein and the climate crisis, telling people to eat less meat hasn't really worked. The world's population is expected to grow by 30% by 2050, but poultry demand will more than double in that time. This demand is driven by countries like India, where meat consumption is rising with incomes. And we can't afford the consequences. We've come to a fork in the road. Tragic as it is, the COVID-19 pandemic has given us that much. Set against this backdrop of climate change and pandemics, these dire threats to planetary health, we have the opportunity to take a step back and ask ourselves, how will we feed 10 billion people by 2050 without breaking the planet any further? It's a question that Ethan Brown, the founder of Beyond Meat, asked himself around 15 years ago. He realized Americans eat three beef burgers a week on average, which is disastrous for the climate. So he decided to upgrade meat by making it from plants. 
The Beyond Burger tastes like meat, sizzles like meat, it even smells like meat, but it's made entirely from plants like peas and beetroot. And if you replace just one of those three animal beef burgers a week with a plant-based Beyond Burger, it would be the equivalent of taking over 12 million cars off the road or powering over 2 million additional homes. Then there's the plant-based Just Egg by San Francisco company Eat Just Inc. It's made from ingredients like moong beans, which have been grown in India for 4,000 years. And it's also vastly better for the planet. These products are so good, people can't even tell the difference. Just look at this clip of late-night chicken egg aficionados in New Delhi trying the moong bean-based Just Egg. It feels like scrambled egg. But if you're saying it's vegetarian, so I'm shocked. It's actually made from moong bean. Moong dal? Yeah. Really, is it moong dal? What yeah. do you think? It's really good. Awesome. Yeah. Oh my god, that's surprising. Serious guess. Yeah, would you I guess? would uh, not have guessed this no? thing. Not at all. And I think this would be a hit if this would come to India, I'm sure. <laughs> The customers were in disbelief that it was not egg. Are you kidding me? It's not egg? No, it's not egg. Now, plants aren't our only option for upgrading meat. New innovations are coming to market soon, which are just as exciting and have similar potential to tackle the climate crisis. Take cultivated meat, for example. It's produced by cultivating animal cells directly to produce meat, instead of raising and slaughtering animals in that inefficient process. It's sometimes called clean meat, because it's literally cleaner, but also because, like clean energy, it's far better for planetary health. Or take fermentation-derived proteins, like those which Chicago-based Nature's Find is bringing to market. The company set up a small production facility in the city's famous old animal meatpacking district, to produce their fungi-based protein. In that tiny space, they will be able to produce as many beef-like burgers as cows living on 7,000 acres of land. Of course, this is all very exciting and shows huge promise to tackle the climate crisis. But there's also a huge amount of work still left to do. At this fork in the road, we have two choices. One of those is to go back to the old normal, to continue to rely on systems like animal protein that brought us here. The other is to choose a fundamentally different paradigm of development, one which makes a clean break, leads us away from the climate crisis and towards a more resilient, abundant planet. We need bold, systemic change to make a real difference, like the government of Singapore, which has made upgrading protein a key piece of their food security and economic growth story for the next decade. We need the brightest minds, students, investors, entrepreneurs, mega food and agri corporations, entire countries all over the world to make similarly visionary moves, to break free of inefficient conventional animal protein and unbreak the planet. As the then CEO of Tyson Foods, one of the world's largest conventional meat producers said in 2018, if we can grow meat without the animal, why wouldn't we?